Hello. Welcome to the uh, resident aspie, the practitioner again. Um, today I will be doing something specifically uh, uniquely from an Asperger's point of view, or at least this particular episode. Um, as you've probably uh, read the summary, this is my thoughts on morality. And uh, if you'll notice the tags, I've used uh, humanities, language, and social science because that would, this would fall into. Um, much of the secular humanist movement, um, uh, particularly, uh, particularly um, Carpe Diem, uh, BC, um, on their website, talk about um, using reason and intellect, uh, reason and the scientific method to determine morality rather than looking at religion. That's well and good. However, I would like to be very clear on something. There are still large chunks of morality, albeit very subtle ones, that we still hold um, that are actually leftovers of our old religious traditions and have been uh, retranslated or rationalized for our day, but don't really actually have any proper rational basis. Um, for example, um, I, again, I can't really explain a lot of this in a 10 minute video, but um, again, uh, comment on me, uh, uh, comment to me afterwards to present your case for it and I will show you exactly my argument. But basically, um, for example, most of our views on um, gender relations uh, and sexual morality are all effectively um, bases on appeal to tradition, which came over left over from religious times. Okay, let me give you an example. Um, censoring. On, the, uh, you, on, the, um, on a lot of uh, YouTube, for example, is a private institution, which prevents people from showing their privates on, um, on, uh, on YouTube. Now the thing is, again, I would like to. Um, now the thing is, I would like to ask people, why do they feel uncomfortable? And now, now, now um, and I'll get to this. The thing is that uh, rationalization for this would be, of course, but of course, people would feel uncomfortable with that. That's a private thing, and it's purely consensual. But why is it private? Why is it necessary? Um, uh, our cousins, the chimps, who mimic every example of uh, sexual behavior from monogamy to polygamy to pedophilia to everything else that we do as humans, they don't have privacy. Why, uh, why as humans do we uh, need privacy? Again, where is, there, is the uncomfort in sex from? Sex is a perfectly natural act for reproduction. Why, again, why is it necessary to, uh, to, hide, uh, to, to hide sexuality? Again, you see, these are my questions, that, um, and the only uh, possible answer which I've general, uh, I can think of, which I've generally gotten, is, oh, well, it's always been that way, or, uh, you know, our, our ancestors wisely decided that. That's what's called the appeal to tradition fallacy. You see, eventually it, re it regresses back to that. Another example is um, why view women as sexual objects. Uh, again, because of you know women have always been inferior. You, you see, a lot of these will go for call for perfection, appeal to tradition. Um, when uh, call for perfection generally comes up when you try to present alternate systems. Um, again, censoring. Like why do we? You know why is it a problem of showing privates? Um, again, if people can provide me a logical context for this now. I should mention something about having Asperger's. Having Asperger's syndrome means that my mirror neurons don't fire um, when I see social cues. This also means that I haven't learned a large chunk of the uh, social cues unconsciously. So the thing is, I've got a slight advantage. Uh, well, I don't know if it's an advantage or a disadvantage, but I do have a slightly different viewpoint in the fact that I don't understand a large chunk of this stuff because I have to internalize it and process it logically. But if I'm having to process stuff and just simply take it, I'm not going to take it for granted. Because um, I know that I don't have good filtering when it comes to information, so I'm going to be wanting to analyze all the information that I constantly get into my system. So therefore, again, as being a critical thinker, I now start questioning about uh, large chunks of morality. That includes um, a large chunk of the double uh, monogamy. There's another one. Why do we need monogamy? Um, you know, I mean, I can understand the concept for women, but um, if in a society now where we've gotten past the evolutionary standpoint, um, I mean. You know why? I mean, why not? Um, I mean, you know, why not be able to? Um, I mean, like they, they still have terms like slut and all these sort of things. Why do we still have these in our language? Uh, or sorry, rephrase that. Why do we still uh, view those terms? Or why do we still have the concept of monogamy or the concept of cheating? Like uh, now, I can understand cheating being going to someone else behind someone else's back. You know, that would be disrespectful to the spouse. You know, it would be basically saying that you, the spouse is inferior. But um, on the other hand, asking the spouse or telling them, and then the and both spouses agreeing to it, um, where's the harm in that? You know, in that particular case, that you know, I mean, why is it disgusting for this? Why is uh, uh, polygamy? Why would uh, uh, I heard an example of a slippery slope argument in the National Post a while back, where somebody said approving approving um, 
approving uh, uh, homosexuality or gay marriage would automatically assume that you would have to uh, uh, take polygamy. Well, the question is, why would you have to? Uh, why would you have to in either case? There's no logical connection between the two. Matter of fact, every single one of these is all purely a matter of aesthetic taste. And uh, or, but I mean, people still believe it, and still, you know, uh, people still take morality, but they claim that they want to use logic and reason for morality. That's my problem. Where is a large chunk of this sexual and everything morality coming in from? Uh, on another note, um, I assume, of course, if any, if any of you have taken a critical thinking class, you're probably well aware of the various tactics that, um, again, I've already probably mentioned the propaganda techniques in some of my critical thinking fallacies videos. Um, you know, transference, glittering generalities, you know, that sort of thing. You know, but there's also techniques which are used to demean women and people of color. Uh, infantilization, uh, trying to you know constantly cover a woman's mouth or something like that to keep them silent. Uh, the hyper skinniness is actually one which can be analyzed in two ways. One of which is the idea of the hyper skinniness is supposed you know is, is just trying to make people assume that that's sexy. Um, but the second one is the fact that if women are skinnier, or if women don't uh, are 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 thin and are not muscular or fat. Then they don't have the cap. Uh, well, skinniness would basically say like I've got enough money to, uh, to uh, you know, non-fat would basically be like I've got enough money that I don't have to store fat, and therefore you know can have a constant access to food. That's one uh, symbol. But the other one, which is the interesting one, is the fact of no muscle. If I have no muscle, I am inferior because of the fact that I cannot physically beat my way out of a situation. That couple with infantilization says I don't have a mind. I am, you know, I am, in, I am infantile, and therefore I don't have a mind to be able to logically outweigh you. You see what I'm saying? If the um, effectively um, by doing that, they are conditioning our mindset to uh, be that women are illogical, inferior, and there, and also uh, physically weaker, and therefore that we have to protect them and that they are a, a, sec a second hand. Certain lines of chivalry still exist. But they are from an older time period when this same viewpoint was much more rapid. You see, like where do these come? You know, where do these come from, and where is the actual logical basis for these? There's positive proof that in some cases women are even superior in certain aspects of logic to men. Um, uh, but you know, women and men are per are are still perfectly logical, uh, unless of course they're influenced too otherwise. The brain development is still possible. Um, I know of women aspies who are still equal to men in their thing because of their brain wiring. You know, so that is not a you know, there, it's a fallacy in a lot of these cases. Um, you know, so again, that's my, my question on modern morality and the still thing about manipulation. So the thing, of course, is, though, is that if we're, um, you know, if our views on morality, again, and what about uh, uh, things about homosexual, uh, you know, views on homosexuality from blood service? Oh, wait, sorry, that's a different kettle of fish. But the thing is that the bulk of our so-called morality, with the exception of stuff like don't harm other people, i.e. don't steal, don't, uh, don't cheat, don't, you know, um, you know that's uh, you know don't steal don't murder that sort of thing beyond those um, there's not really much sense for a lot of what we consider to be morality or the social norms of our society you know again most of it's just appealed to tradition and critical thinking fallacies that were approached left over from religious times uh, like I said I go into greater detail on this but it's only a 10 minute video and I don't really have enough time so here's my thing if you can think of any which you might think might actually be based on actual logic which I um, haven't mentioned, present your case in the comments below, um, or post a video response, uh, either way, and rest assured I will respond to you. Uh, and if there is a critical thinking fallacy, I'll attempt to show where it is as far as I see it, and if you can present to me a logical case as to why it's actually necessary beyond uh, beyond uh, leading it to back to an appeal to tradition. Remember, comfort is not a logical argument. Comfort is based on, uh, you know, comfort is not does not count, and the reason why comfort doesn't count is because comfort is a knee-jerk reaction. Like, if people are uncomfortable from something, that means that they don't really have a logical reason for it. Unless, of course, there, you know, if there is another logical reason for it, then, uh, then uh, namely a particular person who's uncomfortable with it, and get them to present their logical argument. Again, if there isn't one, eventually it will end up going back to a critical thinking fallacy. So remember, comfort and, uh, you know, comfort and, oh, that's the way it's always been, or stuff like that, don't count. Okay, so that's, uh, that's my piece. And, oh... Um, hopefully, YouTube, you won't take this down, but I've already presented my case, and since based on that, um, don't, again, don't ban this video. I'm deliberately doing this just to show a point. Um, if, okay, if, um, again, if my argument system is true, then therefore there should be no problem with me showing my dick on YouTube. I'm going to do this now because of the fact that I don't believe that there is a, more, a logical reason for that morality piece. And if there is, please show it on the comments, and then afterwards I will take this video down or I will re-amend it without my dick on board. So here it is.
I've done